This is the first video in a series of at least two videos. In this video, I hope to accomplish several things. We'll be taking a bit deeper look at using the Logic Analyzer and Protocol Decoder on the Roden Schwartz RTB2004 scope. Note that the Logic Analyzer and Protocol demonstrations are applicable to other scopes that have similar features, though the interfaces on those scopes will be different. We'll also be taking a look at a circuit I designed to demonstrate these features, this being the schematic you're currently looking at. Also note that the design of the circuit was intentional. It's there to expose a couple of interesting things you can run into in digital design. It's not meant to demonstrate good design practice. It could be implemented several other ways, but this is the path I chose with the parts I have on hand. I also want to note I make a few mistakes in the video, and a couple of places I get misled pretty deeply. I believe in each case I correct myself later on. I've left these in intentionally as an example that everybody makes mistakes. Hopefully for the younger viewers out there, you'll realize that mistakes are where your best learning has. Don't become discouraged as you try these kinds of projects. Just dig in, figure it out, learn what you can, and move on. Let's take a look at the schematic. The circuit requires an incoming clock. It's in the upper right-hand corner of the schematic. Faster clocks, circuit runs faster. Slower clocks, it runs slower. This clock is a TTL level clock. TTL logic runs on 5 volts. This clock signal enters a 74LS74 D flip-flop at the, again, the top right-hand corner of the screen. That first flip-flop divides that clock frequency by 2. For a D flip-flop, you configure it for a divide by 2 by taking the Q0 output and attaching it to the D input. Then the clock signal that comes in is divided by 2 and output on the Q output. The output of this first flip-flop is then fed into the clock of the second input. It's configured the same way and it again divides its incoming signal by 2. Its output then is fed into the third flip-flop. It again divides by 2. Its output then going to the fourth flip-flop and all the way down through all eight flip-flops. If the incoming clock signal is 16 megahertz, that means the output of the first flip-flop is 8 megahertz. Output of the second flip-flop is then 4 megahertz. Output of the third flip-flop is then 2 and 1 and 0.5, etc. This creates a binary upcount. If you were to look at that binary upcount, what you would see is the 8 bits start at all zeros and they increment from 0000000, 000 all the way up to 1111111. Once it's hit 1111111, it can count no higher, so the next incoming clock pulse results in all of the bits dropping back to zero. So it counts zero to 255 decimal, zero to 255 decimal, over and over and over. You may notice in the schematic that the output of the eight flip-flops are labeled 80 zero through 87. I've labeled these as both address and data lines because they can be used as either one in the circuit. The next stage in the circuit is the pattern generator memory. It's in the upper right hand corner of the schematic. In this case is drawn, it uses a 29F010 flash uh, ROM device. It could also use a 27C010 EEPROM. The outputs of the eight flip-flops, the 80, 0 to 87, are fed to the a0 to A7 address inputs of that pattern memory. As those flip-flops do their binary up count, that addresses the memory and it outputs a pattern. As designed in the circuit, there are eight patterns of 256 bytes available. The three dip switches you see in the schematic let you pick one of those eight pattern memory blocks. Below the pattern memory are two ICs labeled U6 and U7A. These become important later on in the video. The last stage is implemented as an R2R network. An R2R network can be used to convert a binary value into an analog value. R2R refers to the layout of the resistors inside of the R2R network. In this case, we're taking the output of the pattern memory and we're feeding that into the R2R network. The output then represents an analog voltage that indicates the value of the binary input. In this next picture is a quick look at the proto board I built the system on. In this case the four flip-flop packages are down the left hand side there implementing the full eight flip-flops two per package and the outputs of those flip-flops are being fed across to the uh, LEDs on the left hand side of the logic design station. 
Again, I like to emphasize that this circuit was designed to demonstrate uh, the logic analyzer on the oscilloscope. It's far from an optimal design. It could be implemented a bunch of better ways, but the way it's designed was intentional. So we could go on and actually play with the logic analyzer. In the next video, we'll go ahead and take a look at the logic analyzer and see how the circuit performs.